Hello everybody, this is Andrew Roboto here, and today I would like to do a commentary video on the Dylan Redwine story, which if you are wondering why I'm doing another commentary on this video, it is because I'm doing an updated version of the commentary, because there's a couple updates i got to give in this video, at, well at the end, regarding what happened to Mark Redwine after his trial and whatnot. I didn't explain that in the last video. In the last video I did, at the end, I explained um, that he went on. He was his trial was delayed several times, and then when he and then he went on trial and was found guilty, scheduled to face sentencing on, in October. And I'm doing this video because um, I'm trying to think. It's because I followed the Dylan Redwine case from the night he went missing on November 18th, 2012, up until October 8th of. 2021, which was last year, when Mark Redwine was sentenced. So yeah, anyways, I just thought I'd give a brief history about, little history about this, and on to the video, and we'll see what commentary I have to say. 13-year-old Dylan Redwine was last seen on November 18, 2012, during a visit to his father's house in Vallecito, Colorado, for the Thanksgiving holiday. Dylan's father, Mark Redwine, claims that Dylan went to sleep around 9 p.m. on the night of the 18th. According to his mother, Elaine Hall, um, 9 o'clock was early for Dylan to go to bed because he typically went to bed at around 11 o'clock or midnight because he was up really late texting his friends usually. Especially because he was a big texter on his phone. And that his son was still at the house at 7.30 a.m. when Mark left to do some errands that morning. After returning home at 11.30 a.m., Redwine noticed his son was gone, but assumed he had left to visit one of his friends. Redwine then claimed he took a nap and started looking for Dylan around 2.33 p.m. before alerting police about his missing child. When Mark went to go look for Dylan um, after he took a nap, right before he did that, um, he immediately texted Dylan and called him to, see, to try to get a hold of him because he wasn't home. However, Dylan did not answer his phone. And then, um, so he then went to search for him at the campground, the lake, the bridge at the end of the street, the rock, the wall behind his house, and then um, Dylan's friends, Tristan and Ryan's house. And when he went to those places, Dylan obviously wasn't there. And when he went to Tristan's house, he got no answer from Tristan or Tristan or his family. And then when he went to Ryan's house in Bayfield, Ryan and Dylan's other friend Fernando answered the door. But however, Ryan told him that um, Dylan never showed up and that they haven't heard from him since la since last night. So yeah. Months later, Dylan's parents would accuse each other of being involved with the disappearance of their son during an interview on the Dr. Phil show. In that interview, Mark Redwine mentions that Nickelodeon was on the television when he returned home that morning, and that he didn't notice all of his son's possessions were missing, including Dylan's fishing pole. In response, Dylan's mother Elaine Hall claims Dylan watched MTV and not Nickelodeon. She also claims that Dylan had no interest in fishing and didn't even know how to string up the line for his fishing pole. She then went on to say that her ex-husband didn't know his son well enough to make up a believable story. And then another thing Elaine said was that um, Dylan was a texter and it didn't make sense for him to stop texting early that night. And also she said if he were to go see a friend he would not have taken all of his belongings. And that um, his back, and then Mark said that he also didn't notice his backpack was was missing when he got home. Same with his fishing pole, which he claimed those were never found. And also, Lane said that um, Dylan had not watched Nickelodeon for years. When questioned why the two weren't setting their differences aside to focus on the search for their son, Elaine Hall claims that Mark Redwine's only contact with her was a text message telling her Dylan was missing. She then tried to call and text Redwine in response, but couldn't because he had blocked her number. That was because, according to Elaine, um, 
Mark was very evasive of her, which is why he only texted her and not called her. Mark said that um, he texted Elaine because he knew how she would react in these situations. And from the minute he texted her, immediately she started pointing fingers at him. That he had something to do with this, with the disappearance. Red One claims he did call his ex-wife and was met with accusations suggesting he had something to do with the disappearance. He then stated that his wife never tried to call him. Both Elaine and Dylan's older brother, Corey, claim that Mark Redvine made no attempts to help search for Dylan and never attended any events to raise funds and awareness for the missing teen. Later in the episode, Dr. Phil questions Redvine about the results of a polygraph test he had taken, and Redvine states that he failed one polygraph and that a second test came up as inconclusive. This was because, um... The person Mark went to see for the polygraph test was not qualified to perform it. Which was why he was getting mixed results. Like, first he was told he failed it, then was later told it was inconclusive. And that's when the question started going around whether the person was qualified or not. Which, he was not qualified. And also, um, Elaine took her polygraph test and she passed it. In another segment, Redwine is asked to take a polygraph on the show. He agreed, but wanted to take the test the following day because he felt overwhelmed at the time. The next day, the polygraph was cancelled 20 minutes into the hour and a half long process after Redwine was asked if he felt well enough to take the test, to which he responded, no. He then stated that the reason he didn't feel well was because he only got three hours of sleep and drank half a bottle of Jim Beam the previous night. And in the end, he decided not to take a polygraph test. On June 27, 2013, it was announced that Dylan Redwine's remains were discovered near Middle Mountain Road, eight miles from Mark Redwine's home. They did not find Dylan's skull. Shortly after the teen's body was discovered, Redwine made comments to one of Dylan's brothers, stating that investigators would have to find the rest of the body, including the skull, before they could determine what had happened to the boy. And Mark Redwine was making these comments to Dylan's half-brother, oh, well, wait, not Dylan's half-brother, I meant to say, um, Mark was making these comments to Dylan and Corey's half-brother, Brandon, about Dylan being, Dylan's remains being found, and also... According to Brandon in his testimony, um, Mark was also telling him how Dylan died. He believed Dylan could have either been killed in an animal attack, a hunter shot him, or blunt force trauma. And Brandon said that um, blunt force trauma was didn't make sense for how he died because they didn't find a skull, so that they couldn't so they couldn't determine how he died. On November 1st, 2015, Dylan's skull was found a mile and a half distance from where the other remains were found. Investigators say they found signs of blood force trauma and marks similar to those made by a knife and not wildlife or some other natural occurrence. They also don't believe an animal managed to carry the boy's body eight miles away. True, because the animals were hibernating because... because this was in November when Dylan went missing, because... And obviously they were all hibernating because usually wildlife hibernates, or actually I take that back, usually every year in the winter all the wildlife in the mountains or woods or whatever area hibernates for the winter. And instead concluded that the body and skull must have been moved and placed by a human. Multiple people claim Redline has a short temper and a long history of violence. Ex-wife Betsy Horbath told investigators that Redwine was abusive during their six-year marriage, and once said if he ever had to hide a body, he'd put it in the mountains. She also claims that Mark repeatedly violated a custody agreement and told her he would kill the kids before he let her have them. According to Elaine Hall, Redwine wasn't just fighting her for custody of their children. He wanted half of everything, including one shoe from every pair of shoes she owned. Yeah, so pretty much, uh, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> I'm 
Sorry, I had to take a drink of water. But um, anyways, um, what I meant to say before I stumbled on my words was that um, during both of Mark's marriages to Betsy Horvath and Elaine Hall, he was very controlling of the whole relationship thing and the kids and whatnot. And and after both of his divorces, um, he developed a hatred for both his ex-wives because um, he was trying to get custody of both of his ch his children from both of their marriages. However, Betsy and Elaine were given custody of their children. Mark was given visitation rights. So, yeah. Before Dylan's court-ordered visit to stay with his father in November Sorry. of 2012, I had the 13-year-old stood before a judge and stated that he did not feel comfortable around his father for various reasons. One of the reasons is because um, during Dylan's last visit to see his father, um, they had an argument. And it was around the time they went to Boston. Dylan claimed that his father would always get angry and speak poorly of his mother and brother during his visits. He also said that he felt uncomfortable after finding bizarre photos of his father dressed in women's clothing while wearing makeup and a diaper. Another photo apparently showed red wine eating feces from the diaper. So yeah, how this all happened was um, Dylan and Corey were with their father Mark mid on a trip Midwest in August 2011. And this all happened in the hotel room. Dylan was on Mark's laptop while Mark and Corey were sleeping, just playing games and whatnot, because Dylan loved video games. And it was in that moment Dylan discovered those compromising photos. And after that, he showed the photos to Corey, and both the brothers locked lock themselves in the bathroom so that Dylan could show him the photos and then Corey took a picture of the photos on his phone because him and Dylan were planning on confronting him about the photos. Dylan's older brother Corey claims to have seen the disturbing pictures and believes their father killed Dylan after being confronted by the teen. That's what's believed to have happened during the the court ordered Thanksgiving visit in November 2012. And also in August 2012, um, months before Dylan went missing, Corey confronted Mark about the photos and saying all these insults and whatnot. Like, he was. Because Dylan wanted to him to confront him because. Because Mark told Dylan that his mother and his brother, Corey, were a bad influence on him. When in reality, Mark was a bad influence, Elaine, Corey, and their stepfather, Mike, were good influences on him. Same with his half-brothers, Brandon and Mark Allen, and then his stepmother, Betsy Warbath. And all, all of this, in fact, I take that back, all of Dylan's family except Mark were good influence on him. Mark was a bad influence on his family. I think Dylan had a lot more than just pictures that he wanted to get across to Mark, said Corey. He's just a sick person, but he's fully aware of his actions, and he's fine with being that person. In the months leading up to Dylan's disappearance, the teen had conversations with multiple people about his father's strange behavior and the photos they had discovered. Dylan was very vocal about his dislike for his father, and made many statements about not wanting to visit or associate with him. He became, he started, um, no, sorry, I stumbled again. Dylan started becoming very vocal about his dislike for his father because, um, according to Corey and his testimony, um, Dylan, Dylan lost all reason to look up to Mark after finding the photos. On the night of November 18th, 2012, Dylan made... And then this right here is the text messages that Dylan had with his or text conversation, sorry, that Dylan had with his friend Ryan Nava, who he was going to meet up with. He plans to meet with a friend at 6.30 a.m. the next morning. Sorry. When Dylan did not show up or contact the friend, they sent a text asking, where are you? But they never got a response. 
9.37 p.m. on the 18th of November, 2012, is the last time Dylan sent out a message. During the investigation, Dylan's blood was found on a love seat in Mark Redwine's living room. They also found blood consistent with Dylan's on the couch, the corner of a coffee table, and under a rug in the same living room. Redwine's home was damaged by a fire and had to be remodeled in March 2012. According to Redwine, Dylan had not suffered any injuries in the home after it was repaired. Cadaver dogs were sent in and responded to smells found in Redwine's truck, the living room, the washing machine, and the clothes he was wearing when Dylan went missing. On July 22, 2017, Mark Redvine was arrested and charged with second-degree murder and child abuse resulting in death. Each charge carries a maximum sentence of 48 years. Redvine is scheduled to face trial in September of 2019. Yeah, so after his arrest, um, his trial got delayed several times because there were several mistrials. And then his trial was delayed in 2019 because his attorney was arrested for domestic violence and assault. And then in both 2020 and 2021, up until June of last year, his trial got delayed because of the whole COVID-19 pandemic that's currently happening. So yeah. And of course, Mark Redwine went on trial in June of last year. He was found guilty of second-degree murder and child abuse resulting in death. And on October 8th, or actually, before I get into that, um, prosecutors at that trial confirmed that that the photos were the motive for Mark Redwine's killing Dylan. And I actually saw Corey's, and when I was watching Corey's testimony... He, he presented the photos of Mark Redwine, and let me tell you, they're gross and disgusting. <laughs> that's, why I'm, that's why I never Google search. That's why I, I would highly recommend you never Google search those photos, because they're just gross and disgusting and creepy. So, yeah. Just thought I'd point that out. And obviously... On October 8th of last year, Mark Redwine was sentenced to 48, 48 years in prison. And recently, he has filed a notice of appeal. So yeah, anyways, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.